Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, I just want to go over what a Kubernetes pod is. So a Kubernetes pod is a group of one or more Docker containers. So here we can see we have our cluster. The next unit down in a cluster is a node. So we have a node here, a node here. And then inside these nodes, we have our pods. And we can see inside the pods, right here we have a Docker container listening on port 80, another Docker container listening on port 3000, inside, both of these being inside the pod. The containers in these pods share resources and a network. So each pod is assigned a unique IP address. So we can see a IP address here, 10, 10, 10, 1, then two. So all these pods have different IP addresses. The containers inside the pod though, communi communicate over local host. So inside the here, these two containers will communicate with each other through a local host network. Pods are also ephemeral or they last for a very short time. When a pod is restarted, all the Docker containers inside it are restarted too and the pod is given a new IP address. So if this pod here is restarted, be given a new IP address, and so would the containers running inside it. And because pods are given a new IP address when they restart, and in Kubernetes you often have pods restarting or new ones being built, and this is why in Kubernetes we have services, because Kubernetes services expose pods to the outside world. And this is once again because pods have changing IP addresses when, they are, when new ones are created or restarted. So now that we have this kind of image out of the way, let's actually work, work with some pods using Kubernetes. So what I have over here is just a pod.yaml file, where it will be a pod that houses a single Nginx container pulled from Docker Hub, which is Nginx Alpine. And we can see what we're creating. So the kind of object we're creating is a pod, and we're going to call it my Nginx pod. And we can create it using, using this YAML file. So let's run this. And we can see that our, maybe I'll zoom in one more we can see here that our pod, my Nginx pod, was created. And we can actually see this if we run kubectl get pods. Here it is running right here. And we can also get the logs from the containers inside the pod using kubectl get logs, my Nginx pod. And here we can see all the logs, such as the worker processes in Nginx starting up, our Docker entry point script running, and all that kind of stuff. However, it should be noted that creating a pod this way isn't a good idea as once we destroy this pod, we won't be able to recover it. So right now we have our pods, but let's say we want to delete this, which we can do kubectl delete pod my nginx pod. So we've deleted it. Now let's list out our pods and we can see that it's just permanently gone. And of course this is kind of defeats the point of using Kubernetes. So, cause we would want another pod to spin up. And this is where something called replica sets come in handy. So a replica set is a resource that maintains a stable number of pod copies or replicas. Specifically, the replica set controller guarantees that a specific number of pods will always be running. And we can create a replica set the same way we did with a pod. So this is a different file called replicaset.yaml, where now the kind is a replica, replica set. So the kind of Kubernetes object is a replica set. Specifically, what we do is we set the number of pods with this replicas key. So let me scroll this down a bit more too. So we have a replica set object called my replica set. And what it does is for defining this object, we have a container called my nginx c, once again from nginx alpine, and there will be three replicas of this. And so let me show you what happens now if we use a replica set and spin up and destroy a pod. So let's do, let's apply our replica set. You can see it was created. And now let's list out our pods. So we can see the name, my replica set, with a hash and we have our three pods that are all ready and running. And now let's see what happens if we delete one of these pods. So we'll do kubectl delete pod. Let's do this one right here. So just copy like this. So we've deleted that pod. Now let's check our pods again and we can see another one has already spun up. So this one has a different hash, but our replica set is maintaining a consistent number of replicas, which is has to match this right here. But that's all I wanted to show you about Kubernetes pods. Just kind of a quick crash course on it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. If you like content like this, check out my courses and also my Chrome extension Wit Scepter, both linked in the description. You'll probably find them pretty cool. But besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.